Oh! Guess what, folks? Zach brought over his ITX PC. You remember this one? This is the i5 6400 with the GTX 1060, right? That's the 6 gigabyte video card. Yep, so uh, this is it. This is the Fractal Node 202. You can check out that video right here if you haven't seen it already. But I promised you all that we'd be upgrading the stock Intel cooler that's currently still in here with the CryoRig C7, which is a low-profile ITX cooler from CryoRig. And uh, we're going to go ahead and show you the installation, so how, how easy it is, how, I don't know, maybe complex it is to install. I doubt it's that uh, complicated. And then we're also gonna show you the advantages to having an aftermarket cooler, especially in a small case like this where airflow is, well, rather restricted. So I uh, gotta find, I don't know where I put, oh, here it is, oh, this one. There it is, big old C7 on the side, this is it. That's your, uh, it's pretty heavy, right? It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good, it's gonna be good. Oh my, yeah. All right, we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some beauty shots of this real quick so you guys can look at this and listen to some cool music while we're setting everything else up. So uh, here we go, roll, roll the tech porn. Okay, Zach, so I told people that uh, we were gonna show them how simple or complex it was gonna be to install this. So in order to fully gauge how easy the installation process is, you're gonna be installing it. Awesome. You sure you get, you sure ready for this? You sure? No, I'm gonna fry this thing. You sure you're ready for it? Fry this thing. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to pull out the motherboard from the, from the actual case. So we're gonna have to unplug pretty much everything connected to the motherboard, which is everything else in the case, consequently. So uh, yeah. Go ahead, get to it, get to okay. it. <laughs> Let's go. Oh yeah. Ooh, mama mia. All right, good luck with that one. That one's gonna be tough. Might have to pull your RAM out to get to it. Oh, we're gonna have to reinstall the IO again. Remember how difficult that was last oh time? <laughs> oh my God, this thing. Should just be able to pull one side up all the way. And then you can just, yeah. Just wanna set those somewhere. Nice. All right, so those things right there, that one, and then the I/O. Pretty much the only other two things you need. Oh, and your HD audio up front. Man, I can't open this. <laughs> you, you good? You good? You having problems? <laughs> it's the HD audio cable. How difficult can it be? I need to go to the gym. The good thing about the stock Intel cooler, it's very easy to, I guess, apply and then pull off later on if you need to upgrade. Okay, good. There she is, your i5-6400. Now, for the sake of consistency, normally I would recommend putting on new thermal paste. It looks like you've got enough on there. Um, we'll probably scrape, well, there's not much on here. We'll put a little more of the C7 stuff, the CP7 stuff on there. Just a tiny little bit. Tiny little bit. That's good. Yeah, that's all we need. Oh, come on, Zach. Oh, you should have heard. Zach was just making fun of all of you who uh, very, very meticulously pointed out the fact that we forgot to screw the uh, the support bracket, uh, the riser card, into the frame. Okay, so you got everything disconnected from the motherboard. Now you can unscrew those four screws and go ahead and pull that out. Oh, did you follow it? I guess. You guess? <laughs> that's a no. Wait, where it goes? Hey, you said it went under there. Oh, dear. Lovely. It should be okay. There's nothing secured up front. It's just kind of guided through. Oh, 
And there she comes. Slowly but surely. Zach's having issues. Yep, having some serious issues. Nope. Oh. If anything, this just this just shows you how tightly packed everything is in the Note 202. I mean, it's a great case. It's just very, uh, very crammed. It makes use of every inch of space it offers. I call that productive. I guess we can use this box as our little uh, motherboard bench for now. That'll work. Let's see. We need AMD fence. this one. I think this is the. Right. Yeah, these are directions. Okay, so you're gonna be using these four holes over here in the corners. So you have both AMD and Intel support in one bracket, so that's nice. Not too many pieces to have to fumble with. Is that it, seriously? Oh my god. Wait, this, flip it over? I understand this. You, un not really. <laughs> you understand? Okay, well, let's try this one then. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's in this one. Installation manual. Ah, oh, there you go. Now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You have an LGA 1150X. People can't see that now. They can. Okay, so you're gonna start with this one right here. So oh, you've got your, uh, you've got your. What are you doing? Are you? Okay. All right, you good? All right, now hold both and flip the motherboard over. No, never, never do it like that. Go over here, cross pattern. Start over here first. Then it's gonna be poking way up, and you're not gonna have it secure enough. Now the key here is not to over tighten. So you wanna. Tighten it just enough to we start feeling some serious stress. Don't tighten it too tight. This is a plastic back plate. So, uh, you know, worst case, you end up snapping the thing. All right, where are those other two bolts? It is nice that CryoRig always uh, seems to include these tools for installation. These are good. I mean, I know this is for a specific uh, bolt size, but I mean, you could really just save this and use it for anything else. And, okay. And Zach? There you go. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? There you go. That's about it? Yeah, that's it. Alright, so everything you've just undid, you have to redo. Okay, so you got the four pin. Uh, now that's gonna be plugged into, I'm pretty sure it's the white one. I think that was the one we plugged into last time. Should be CPU one. I'm gonna do something Whoa. with this. Whoa. Um, I have a tie strap if we Whoa. need to, we can uh we can like, I don't know, tie it somewhere. Worst case, we can just leave it. But no, that actually fits perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so uh, RAM, probably want to do RAM next. Get that out of the way. If you ever need to find your motherboard specific manual and you just didn't save the box for whatever reason, then you can hop on over to your motherboard's manufacturer website, uh, click on something like, I believe this one's gonna be downloads. So manual, click mm -hmm. that. And we want English, of course. Uh, hey, can you read traditional Chinese? No. Okay, never mind. Power LED positive starts at two, and then the power switch positive starts at six. Um, you got front panel connected? Good. You got, uh, I think you connected everything. All right, are there any SATA? Yeah, that's fine. Um, anything else that you can think of that you may not have plugged in? No, it looks good to me. I can't see anything loose. This, is this correct? Or is it supposed to be in the white one? Oh, that's right. Let me get my trusty, uh, utility box so we can properly secure. Look at that folks, I already have it out. This is the megalith of computer screws right here. Oh wow. So everything you could possibly need, pretty much every size thread for a regular old computer. Um, try, I don't know if this is gonna be long. Yeah, this should be, okay, try that. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go, Zach. Go ahead and make sure all these cables are tucked in. I know it's gonna be a tight fit again. Oh, and uh, don't worry about these. We didn't put those in because uh, they're specific type of screws required. And I don't have that here. He has it in that box that he took home with him. So he'll take care of that later. Look at there. Now rotate that puppy. Ooh, look at that, you can see the fan through. Doesn't that look nice? It'll look nice. Now apart from that blower style cooler which you have in there, I don't blame you for having that. It's a good choice for an ITX PC. Um, everything should be a lot quieter now, especially under load. So uh, that's something that I'm interested in. We'll test that out and then we'll also test out your thermals and then uh, yeah, we'll be able to just form our conclusions. I mean, based on what I know so far, that C7 is gonna really bring down your temps, so, yeah. 
Okay, so we started, we're just using the trial version of Ida 64 here, and our idle temperatures were about 20, 21 C, basically it's room temperature. You're not gonna get uh, CPU core temps below room temperature if you're using an air cooler. Uh, you'd only get that in the case of something like a phase change cooler. Okay, so it's been going for about, it's a little over eight minutes, but uh, I think our temps are pretty much at their maxes at this point. So 46 degrees across two of the cores, and it looks like 40, around 41 and then 38 for the three and four uh, cores there. So 46, 47, so we're just gonna call it, it said 47, now we'll just call it 47. So that's our max core temperature now. And as you'll see, here's the graph of the previous temperature. We were at 67 degrees Celsius using the stock Intel cooler. So we literally experienced a 20 degrees Celsius dip in core temperatures just by installing the Cryorig C7, which you can pick up right now for a very modest price. The link to that product is in the description. So uh, with that said, I mean, that's pretty much that's pretty much all I wanted to show temperature-wise. I mean, that's it's pretty much black and white. So while Prime 95 is still running, you see we're coming up on 10 minutes right now. Uh, the cooler is still on uh, and it's running right now. I don't know what the fan speed is currently, but this is what you would expect it to run at around full load if you don't tweak with the uh, fan curve at all. And I'm gonna put the camera right, so my face right now is about, it's about a foot away from the camera, from the camera's microphone. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the, uh, for the cooler here so you can get an idea of how loud it is under full load. So I'm the same distance away from the camera right now that the uh, CPU fan is and I can tell you just straight up right now, there's a huge difference in terms of how loud the uh, cooler is under load. Zach, you can attest to that too, right? So you had this computer for well, a few weeks with the Intel, the, the stock Intel fan, and now that you've got that thing and hear it, this is what it would sound like while playing a game, something similar to this, maybe a little quieter. Uh, what do you think about the difference? So much quieter. It's a lot quieter, huh? So if I told you this was about 30 bucks, would you invest in one of these for $30? So you think it's worth uh, extra healthy CPU core temperatures and on top of that, uh, more enjoyable gameplay and just, you know, if you just want to watch movies or something and you got something else going on in the background, if your fan ever super. did pick up in speed, it wouldn't sound very bad, would it? It's super quiet. Yeah, it's a lot better. So uh, that's it, folks. So there's your temperatures. We went up to 48, so I'm going I'm to adjust that in the, uh, in the graph. But 48C and very uh very modest sounds coming from your from your computer now so you, you don't have to worry about that loud spooling sound that you get on a, yeah. like a turbine <laughs> it is exactly what it sounds like with a stock cooler so all right folks uh, i'm gonna go ahead and let zach end the video go ahead and say the the usual zach thank you guys is that all you're gonna say yeah and subscribe <laughs> please please subscribe please <laughs> please